What's up guys? E-Drone here, and today we're going to be doing the TBS Crossfire mod to my Tyrannus QX7. Stay tuned. This is the Tyrannus QX7 radio. This is my main radio for all my FPV drones, and this radio is quite awesome. I really like it. Uh, it's been doing a really good job. However, I decided I was going to go ahead and purchase the TBS Crossfire Micro TX Long Range Transmitter Module. Check this thing out right here. So this is the micro size, which is really nice because it's extra compact. And if we turn the Tyrannus QX7 over, you can see it has this little back port here. This little back door pops open. Uh, this is a little cable I made to do uh, firmware updates for uh, FR Sky receivers. But if you look here in the back, this module perfectly fits in the back of this radio, nice and compact. It clicks in. Throw on your antenna for your Crossfire module here, and this radio actually will run. TBS Crossfire. Now the only issue with this is because of the QX7, the way it comes set up from the factory, there is a modification that we need to do. If we open up the radio, there's actually a transistor that needs to come out. And this little board needs to go in its place. And we have to do some soldering. We have to solder up uh, some wires to this uh, pad here to certain points inside the transmitter. Now I've not been looking forward to doing this actually it's been kind of a daunting task but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get through it together we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and we're gonna do it step by step and you can see um, how we make out with doing it. So obviously the first thing we're gonna need to do is go ahead and take out this module. Second thing we need to do is we need to remove the battery. So we're going to go ahead and remove the battery. Now I did a, a battery little mod here. Um, I swapped out the stock AA battery tray. I'll put a link in the description for this video. Um, this battery is quite awesome. It's a 3800 milliamp and uh, this is what I've been using to power the QX7. So we're going to go ahead and remove this battery take it out of the way. And now you can see with the battery tray removed, um, we have two Phillips head screws there. And once we take these two Phillips head screws out, the back of the radio should just pop right off and allowing us to get to the uh, circuit board so we can go ahead and do this modification. So let's go ahead and remove these two screws here. Okay, so you just take a small little Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to go ahead and remove these screws. Now, they're in there pretty tight, so make sure you get a good grip on them. And we're going to go ahead and just remove these two Phillips head screws here. Now, if you have the um, battery tray in, there will actually be two more screws here at the bottom, but I've already removed mine. So that makes it a little bit easier. So there's one. And we have one more on this side. Add of a uh, modification. If you're not too good with soldering, um, you might want to just opt out and get the full size version of the Crossfire because then you don't have to worry about um, using the Lewis scripts and having to do this modification. But if you're going to use the micro TBS transmitter, you have plugs in right here with a smaller profile, you have to do this modification in order to Okay, so we have the screws removed. Now, very carefully, you'll see that the back of the radio is now free to come off. As you can see right there, I had a sticker here, so that's what you're seeing there on the bottom. But there's the back of the radio. 
There's nothing in there, it just comes right off. And now you see we have access to the inside of the radio so we can do this modification. Now, the information that uh, we're gonna be using in order to complete this modification, I'm gonna pop up a picture right here, is from the TBS website. Um, they have very detailed instructions on how to do this modification correctly. And it, it involves um, taking this board, we're gonna have to flip it over to get to the transistor that we need to remove, and we're gonna remove these screws to pull this board out so we can go ahead and get gain access. Taking a closer look at the board, this is the area we're gonna be working in. So our little uh, PCB board here is gonna sit with a piece of double-sided tape right here on this chip. Then we're gonna be wiring the ground wire right here to the ground. We're gonna be wiring the 3.3 volt wire here. And we're also gonna be wiring to this pin right here. And then there's another wire that's gonna go on the back side of the board where that transistor is. So what we need to do is we need to unscrew these screws holding in this main PCB board so we can gain access to the other side. So let's go ahead and remove those screws. Okay, we went ahead and carefully removed the screws holding on the main power board. Now, we need to kind of slowly and gently work this board up loose off of where it's sitting. Because it's kind of sitting in here a little snug. So we're just going to kind of move this board a little bit, being very careful we don't uh, damage any wires. Just slowly just move the board just like so, so you get it loose. Now, once you get it loose, we should be able to flip this board. Now, see the little vibrator here? That's a little vibrating. That's what you feel when the Tyrannus vibrates. That's going to come right up off of the, the piece there. And don't worry about your knob. See how the knob fell off? That's, that's not a big deal. Um, you're going to lift this board up. And we need to get access to the back side. And watch your ribbon cables, obviously. So now that we're on the back side of the board, now I can show you uh, what needs to be removed and where we're going to be soldering to. Right here at the top, right here at the top, let me get my, you'll see a little transistor right here and it's labeled Q400. This needs to be removed. Um, and you can try to, to, to heat it up and desolder it, but really the best way is to just grab a hold of it and uh, just kind of break it off. That seems to be the best way. Notice that we're not undoing any of the cables on the board, okay? And I don't think we're gonna need to do that. There we go, so we've got chip there. We were able to get some of it off. So some of it chipped. Let me see what I can do and we'll, uh, we'll cut back and show you when, it, when it's all removed. You can see where I scraped it off, where it says Q400. That's exactly what you wanna do. You wanna just scrape and pull off uh, that transistor. And once, that done, once that's done, uh, you're basically ready to go ahead and uh, start installing your new mod. Now we're just going to be using some uh, spare silicone wire to do this mod. Uh, this is like an extra camera wire platform that came in uh, one of my kits that just extra. I always save all my wires. So basically we're going to need four different wires. Um, and I'm going to use this white wire here that came from one of my uh, ESCs. And um, that way we have four different colors. That way it keeps it a little bit less confusing when we go to wire this guy up. We need to solder the wire to this little solder joint right here on the Q400 where we remove that transistor. So we're gonna solder a wire to here and then we're gonna run that wire uh, down and around and over to where we're gonna put the board on the front side, which for here is gonna be right where this chip is. So you need to make sure you have enough wire to reach. 
So this is right about where it's going to be. And if I flip this wire around, we have plenty of wire to reach. So I think it's going to be easier to um, solder all the wires to the main control board first. And then we will solder them to the little micro board that we're going to put right here. Uh, and that will be the last part and then we'll be done. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder to that soldering joint. But we definitely don't need a lot because it's a very small joint. And we're using a pencil tip. We're using a very fine point soldering iron here. So, you want to have a nice steady hand and hold. Get some pre tinning going on here. Pre tin that tip. And I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh solder right here to this pad. All right, there's a little bit of fresh solder. It's such a small pad, you really, you really don't need a lot. So we'll take our little wire here. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and pre-tin the little white white wire here. So I'm just gonna take the wire. Get some fresh solder on there. Just a little bit, don't need much. Now, go ahead and flip the board back over. And you see where we made that little extra bit of solder. And we're just gonna hold just going to hold this wire right about where it's going to go on that little soldering and we're just going to heat it up just like that you got a good connection there you don't need much heat at all for that part now we're basically done with the back side of the board so as you can see we got the solder connected to the correct pad make sure we're not bridged anywhere which we're not so we're going to take this wire and I'm actually going to run it right around here like so. So that way it, it comes right underneath of where it connects to the screw hole. So you can see the wire coming out here on the side. And we just want to make sure that we don't get the... Uh, make sure that the screw doesn't... Um, pinch through this wire when we go ahead and screw it back in. I'm going to go ahead and solder up this little control board here. And I like that it's nice and clearly labeled. We have our ground, our 3.3 volt, our input, and we have our output. So four pads, we'll go ahead and solder those up. I'm going to use our helping hands. There we go. I had to do that off camera, guys. It was really, really tight in there, uh, but I think I got it. So, um, almost made a mistake as well. So, we have the yellow wire going right here to this pin for the, the, the SPI pin right here. You have the ground wire going to this side of this little transistor. Now, what I confusingly did was... You see where it says ground right here, and then there's a little, small little pad. So I was thinking that you solder the ground wire to this pad, but you don't. You actually solder the ground wire to this side 
of this little capacitor. Same thing on this side. You see where it says 3.3 volt? There's a tiny little pad right there, and I thought you soldered this to that pad, but you don't. You solder the power wire, the 3.3 volt, to this side of this little capacitor here. So don't make that mistake. A uh, very easy mistake to make. Uh, but after watching uh, several videos and doing some more information online, um, come to find out that you have to solder to the sides of this little capacitor here. So now that we have these all soldered up, plus our um, wire on the back side, we're now ready to go ahead and mount our um, little control board here. We're now ready to mount our little control board and go ahead and get it soldered up and then we'll be all done with this mod. You can see we got it all wired up now. We got the red wire going to the 3.3, black wire ground going to the ground, the other side of this little uh, capacitor here. You have the yellow wire which is the N going to the um, SPI pin right here. And then you have the out going around to the back side of the board uh, where that we remove that transistor uh, on that solder pad on the left side. And that's supposed to be it. Uh, put some double-sided tape on the other side of the um, little uh, PCB mod here. And we're going to go ahead and put the back back on, screw it down, and power it up and give her a test and hopefully everything works great. And moment of truth. Switch warning. Okay. Angle mode. So far, so good. Now that we have the mod completed, you're going to go ahead and push and hold in on the menu button to radio setup. You're going to scroll down. Okay, now that we have the mod done, go ahead and push the menu button, page over to setup. You're going to come over here to where it says internal RF. You're going to turn this to off. Come down to where it says external RF, and you're going to scroll over till you see CRSF for crossfire. We're going to enable that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug in our Crossfire module. I'm going to go ahead and screw on our Immortal T antenna onto the module. Power on the radio, the uh, Crossfire module should go ahead and power up now that we have the external RF to on. Mode. Let's take a look at the back. You see the external module is powered up and it's got like a yellowish light, which means it's uh, it's not bound yet. But what we want to see is a green light when we get it bound. But we're going to bound it, bind it in another video, but I uh, just wanted to show you how to do that Crossfire mod for your Tyrannus QX7. Um, pretty simple to do, not too bad. Um, just make sure you have a nice soldering iron with a nice uh, pencil tip. Really fine point tip. And um, now that we have this done, we can get, go ahead and uh, get ready to dive into the crossfire and, and get everything all set up and get our receiver uh, bound, which is supposed to be uh, uh, easier than the um, traditional FR Sky. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. More crossfire videos to come, so stay tuned to the channel. Until next time, guys. E-Drone, out.